interested. What does that look like? They're against it. If you believe the Bible from beginning to the end? Right. Well, if you believe the Bible that's what, from... That's what Christians are. Yeah. Right. That's not what I asked them. I said, what does what their Christianity look like? Okay? Like and that's fruit. what we ask most of these people. Is what, what exactly does your Christianity look like well, okay, in a so land you're that murders to over 3,000 gotcha. people? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now you're getting to the gist of it. Yeah. Because uh, that's the problem. All right. You know. God and word. I love street preachers. I follow. I give actually to a couple of street evangelists. I God's love word is very yep. clear in what He thinks about abortion. Absolutely. Okay. And we are living in the midst. I had not before. I would say. Wow. Um, and you yeah, came through it. And you came through it and all that stuff. That's that's good because God See, can always forgives us for all our sins. Yeah. A lot of people have a really good moral opinion. Okay. But what does that translate to in deed? See, God's word is very specific that if you love yeah. me, you're supposed to follow my commandments. Right. And what is the greatest commandments of all? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. And on this, these two rest all the law and the prophets. Okay. Um, unfortunately, do you know that you have a rep state representative at Fallon who goes to your church? We had a bill in the Texas legislature in February, HB 948, put forth by Representative Tony Tinderhorn, that would have made abortion illegal in Texas. Okay. Representative Fallon, your pro life representative, didn't support it. Your pastor, who leads the prayer caucus of the legislature, the pro-life pastor, we didn't support it. In fact, it was the pro-life movement that killed that book. That would have made abortion a totally illegal. From Texas. I mean, not retroactively, but immediately. We would have treated it as it is, murder. And it would have been prosecuted as such. And it also would have said, we don't care what the feds say, we're ignoring the feds, we're a sovereign state. And your pro-life representative and your pro-life pastor did support that. And to tell you the truth, probably the majority of the pro-life people here did support that. Because pro-life people like to look at women as victims. We don't have abortions because we have no other way. We have abortions okay. because we have They no treat other women desire. like they're stupid. Yeah. Okay. We had no and other I had no other desire. So anybody that has yeah. So But it's neat you can actually admit that. You know what I mean? A lot of women that are post abortive, you know, that's really a hard thing to admit. You know what I mean? It's good. Yeah. And, and so what we want to do, especially with um, people like Romans you three, what it's And the thing is, you know, especially somebody like you who actually sees it for what it is, we ask, well, if they were taking your children from your children's ministry and killing them at a rate of 3,000 a day, would your reaction be what it is for these babies? And most people can say that. No, 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 I'd be worried against that. But they're murdering 3,000 God's image bearers every day. And every one of them is the same as you and I in the eyes of God. So why aren't we treating them? Because the truth is, most Christians are ageists. Just like you could be a racist, they're ageists. They don't believe that children, before they're born, you really need to be comfortable with really what people are. And the reason why we stand here with these graphic signs is we're abolitionists, like the abolitionists of slavery in the 1800s. We are going to show what you are comfortable with. We are going to turn the light and show. It's the only way to pierce my heart is the full, I mean, hardcore truth. And I was watching a lot of street preachers. Mm -hmm. So I am a huge. Well, you should come out and join us. We're out six days a week. We're at the high schools. We're at the Trying high to teach schools the kids. five days a yeah. week. And then we're out at the schools, on, uh, at the church on Sunday morning. And then we're, we have home church on Sunday morning. 
you should come out and join us because you know God's word doesn't say have a good moral opinion about something or pay somebody else to do it for you it says you are to die to self pick up your cross and follow me you know? and that's in my family so are a lot of us <laughs> yeah and believe me we're alone in the Christian family as well. Yeah. Your church told us if we step on this side, we're not so Christian Christian And you have your constant over there. It should not be so. And we're here to tell people, you know, everybody is comfortable in their apathy. Just in this time we've been talking, we've been talking 10 minutes. Babies, just in the time we've been talking i was talking to the security guard for an almost for what 75 minutes yeah 150 babies i asked him what does your christianity look like he says you're looking at it he stood between the two small pillars guarding those two big pillars that's what we're here to call people out because you know what did James say? James 4 17, I believe. To know what's the right thing to do and not do it. All sin. All sin will keep you out of the presence of God. So there it is. And we're here to shine a light because this is the Holocaust. It's ours. You know, look, look, at, look at the Nazis, all right? And they, I was telling this, this, this guy here. He's like, yeah, oh, Bonhoeffer, he was awesome. I was like, yeah, Bonhoeffer, he was awesome. Except if Bonhoeffer was alive today, he'd be standing here with us, and you'd be acting the same way towards him that you're acting towards us right now. Yes. Nazis only killed 11 million people. We got nothing on us. We have killed over 60 million. And it's not only your church, we're at all, oh, no, we're all the Christian times. churches just we're to say, please, time. you know, treat it as such. It's a Holocaust. Treat it like that, you know. Yeah. And how awesome it would be for you since you're post-abortive and you've come full cycle and back to the Lord, you know, for you to be at the high schools with us. That would be, like, really awesome if you ever want to do that. Because you can talk to the girls that are, you know, thinking about it or afraid or have had them from your perspective, you know? At the moment, my daughter is not speaking to me. She's in the world. She's world. My kids are having a hard time, too. Yeah. And then this family here, they've adopted six kids. So we take it full cycle, you know? They, yeah. the, you know, these kids were from really hurt homes and stuff, and they had them fostered, and then they came into their home, and they just kept them, you know, and they're adoptive. So we're into it all the way. We love kids, pre-born, after they're born, no matter what, we're willing to step in and do that, you yeah. know, as God commands, you, you know? There's 13,000 kids in foster care system. So if we just had a couple churches say, hey, let's stop, and this, let's help these children in Texas. I mean, it would take just we a couple in each in congregation. Hey, guys. I'm going to come over there with you. I'll, I'll pass out some literature. My name's Kimberly, by the way. Good to meet you. <laughs> God bless you.
I love your hair too. I'm so jealous. <laughs> no, yours is way better than mine. <laughs> is it? You want mine? 